We see Susana. We're gonna try to rotate onto him. He's very weak. He is able to get box four. We miss our three. We're gonna use our two. Get a basic attack, and we're able to clean up the Susana. We see two people chasing us, so we're gonna kind of fall back, route a safe way, and avoid them as much as possible. We're gonna use our three for increased movement speed. We get stunned. We're gonna throw off our one. We have two symbols on our passive. They're rotating towards the Sylvanas. We're gonna try to rotate in, help them out. We got our three, get it onto Morgan the Fae. Clean her up. We're gonna use our ultimate, get the pick onto the Fafnir. That's a double kill. Kind of a soft triple kill. We throw off our one. We were a little too early there, a little too excited. We take a lot of damage. We don't have any health or any mana. We're gonna have to back it up right here. We are able to escape. What a deuce, goody boo, it's your boy Sean of Gaming, and today we're going to be playing Crimson Magnus, Morgan Le Fay, and Mid on the PTS. If you are new to the channel, I add some commentary to a game that I've already played with the intentions of seeing what went right, what went wrong, and hopefully there's something that we can learn together. If there is something that we learn together, make sure you check out the channel and subscribe for more content. If you are a returning viewer, I think this is my favorite skin of this upcoming patch. Morgan Le Fay looks like a Dark Souls boss. It's just a really clean skin. She looks demonic. She looks futuristic. She looks really clean. Morgan Le Fay is receiving a nerf. Her one is getting a two second increase on her cooldown reduction, but I think she's still going to be pretty strong. So let's go ahead and jump into Morgan Le Fay's kit. Morgan Le Fay's one, Sigil Mastery. Morgan Le Fay summons a crashing magical sword imbued by a sigil of her choice which is briefly carved into the ground. Enemy gods hit are marked with the sigil causing secondary effects. Mark of the mind is going to fear enemies from the center of the sigil. Mark of the body is going to create a slowing field. Mark of the soul is going to spawn a decoy that attacks enemy gods hit for 4 seconds. The slow is going to last for 4 seconds and it's going to be a 35% slow. Morgan the Phase 2, Dragonflight. Morgan the Phase summons a dragon apparition which bursts from the ground in front of her, dealing damage and knocking up enemies hit. The dragon then flies forward dealing damage again and knocking back enemies. This is going to apply Mark of the Spirit to enemy gods hit. Morgan the Phase 3, Shroud of Wildfire. Morgan the Fae dawns and sends a cloak of wildfire, damaging enemies and stopping on enemy gods. On expiring, the wildfire is going to explode, leaving a 4 second debuff on enemies that continues to deal damage. While the debuff persists, enemies that use a movement ability combust, taking damage again. Morgan the Fae gains movement speed for using this ability and can extend the debuff on our enemies with continued basic attacks. This is going to apply Mark of Matter to enemy gods hit. The movement speed increase is going to be 16% at level 1, 24% at level 5, and the buff is going to last for 4 seconds. Morgan Le Fay's ultimate, Consuming Power. Morgan Le Fay rises into the air, consuming the marks on enemies in front of her, dealing damage and empowering her next strikes. For a short duration after Morgan Le Fay can fire out 3 devastating strikes of dark energy, dealing damage and providing a missing health heal per enemy god hit. Initial marks consume increase the width of the energy projectiles. Subsequent hits per projectile is reduced by 50%. The missing health heal is going to be 11% at level 1, 15% at level 5. And finally, Morgan Le Fay's passive, Empowered Blade. Morgan Le Fay's abilities mark enemy gods, also activating the shared symbol on her sword, providing magical power. Once her sword has gained all 5 symbol, Morgan Le Fay becomes empowered, gaining double the magical power buff and reducing the cooldown of consuming power by 10 seconds before the symbols are drained. The empowered duration is 10 seconds and then the mark is going to be 30 seconds. The magical power is going to be 2 plus 0.4 per level for each symbol. In terms of the leveling order, at level 1, we want to put a point to our 1, level 2, put a point to our 3, level 3, put a point to our 2, level 4, another point to our 1. We want to max out our ultimate whenever we can, max out our 1, max out our 3, max out our 2. In terms of the start, we started with Sands of Time. Sands of Time is going to provide us with 30 magical power, 10 MP5, and 10% cooldown reduction. It has a passive that this item grants 2 MP5 per 10% of your missing mana. It can be upgraded at level 20. Then we also picked up the tier 1 of Spear of Desolation. I really like Saints of Time now. I used to think it was really bad at the beginning of the season, but then they buffed it a little bit. Probably my favorite magical starter item. 
we were able to get two picks on the enemy, Morgan Le Fay. I think they were both on Morgan Le Fay. For our Relic, we went with Aegis because we're going against a Suzano and a Morgan Le Fay. They don't have crazy amounts of CC, and I'd rather use my Aegis to avoid either of their ultimates. So with Morgan Le Fay, her passive is like a little mini game. You want to try to get four stacks on it, wait to get ready for a fight, and then get that fifth stack and dump your whole kit on somebody. We do have a level on the enemy Morgan Le Fay, trying to get a little bit of poke damage onto her. So the little mini game that we're playing right now with our passive is a little weird because now we need to land her two to activate everything. Typically, it would be your second one or your third one that you'd be trying to land as your fifth ability. We do have enough money for Spear of Desolation, so we're gonna go ahead back and pick that up. Spear of Desolation is gonna provide us 110 magical power, 10 flat magic penetration, and 10% cooldown reduction. If you receive a kill or an assist on enemy god, all of your non-ultimate cooldowns are going to be reduced by 2 seconds, and your ultimate is going to be reduced by 6 seconds. So the reason we're going into Spear of Desolation, it's a really strong early game item. The 110 magical power is going to be very helpful. The 10 flat penetration is also going to be very relevant in the early game. And then the 10% cooldown reduction is just nice. The passive is going to help us throughout the game. All around, pretty strong item to be going into first. On my way. Be right back. Enemy missing middle. Morgan the Fay just backed, so we should be able to clear this way for free. Rotate to something. Looks like we're gonna go for the back harpies. We might meet Bakasora there. We land our three. I'm gonna throw off our two. We have our ultimate. That's a Morgan the Fey ultimate. We're gonna use our Aegis. We have our passive fully activated. We're gonna cast our three shots. We miss every single one. So that's bad on us. And we go down. Right there, we were out. But since we had our passive fully activated, we were thinking like, hey, let's get in there and try to get some damage off. We should have just played it safe and avoided all three of them. We were out, but then we chose to go back in to try to get some damage off. So we go down. It's kind of a silly mistake, but I feel like that's not a terrible mistake. It's just more that was preventable instead of that was the wrong play. If we would have gotten the pick on the enemy, Morgan Le Fay, might have been a little bit more worth it. However, it's probably better to stay alive than it is to trade, get a pick on somebody. We miss our three, we miss our two. We're gonna throw off our one. We're able to get that onto the Fafnir. Now it's a 3v2. We miss our three. This Fafnir is very wiggly. We have our ultimate in two seconds. Odin jumps in. We throw off our three, we fall back. Odin is able to get the pick. So now our passive is looking a little more ideal. If we land our 1-2, that's a weird way to say it. If we land the second one or the third one, we're going to gain a stack. Then whenever we're ready to fight, we just want to throw out that opposite of what we've previously casted. And I hope y'all understand what I mean by our second one, third one, and first one.
I feel like there's gotta be. I could say the colors, that might be a little bit easier. So right now we need to land green and purple. I feel like landing purple is probably going to be the better one ahead of the team fight whenever we want to dump our whole kit. That way whenever we do get to the team fight, or whenever we want to get a pick on somebody, we're going to use our green one. That will slow them and be a little bit more helpful whenever we're getting damage off. We get our three off, he dashes, so he goes down. Sabakasaur ultimate, that's a bead from Morgan Le Fay. Is ready. We are burning mana pretty quickly, but that's why we have Sands of Time to help us recover that mana. When we're just clearing wave, I think it makes sense to just use our red one. We're a little bit short of being able to pick up soul gems, so we're just going to hang out a little bit longer. In the early game when we're using our one, I like landing my inner and outer damage on either the archers or the melee minions. I don't like casting the inner damage in the middle and just relying on the outer damage to clear the wave. I'd rather fully clear either the front minions or the back minions and then basic attack the other ones. Whenever we're leaving Fountain, we do want to be using our 3 to gain that increased movement speed. We land our purple one. So now we just need to land our green one. By landing our purple one, we've increased our power a little bit. We're gonna go ahead back and pick up Soul Gem. Soul Gem's gonna provide us with 80 magical power, 150 health, 12% magical lifesteal, and 10% cooldown reduction. It has a passive that on successful hit of an ability, you're going to gain one stack. At four stacks, your next ability that damages an enemy god will deal bonus damage. It previously was on 30% of your magical power, but now it's going to be 25% with this upcoming patch. It's going to deal that 25% magical power to each god hit and will heal yourself and allies within 20 units for 40% of your magical power and also consume the four stacks. So this item is going to give us a little bit of lifesteal, a little bit of cooldown. We're sitting at 20% now. I think a little bit of lifesteal goes a long way on Morgan Le Fay. We miss our green one. This Fafnir is good. We're gonna get our passive fully online. He jumps away. So there was not much we could do with our passive fully up. So anytime we land an ability on an enemy, we're going to be marking them with some kind of symbol. And whenever we use our ultimate, there's a cone attack that's going to consume symbols. The more symbols we can zoom, the wider our basic attacks or our slashes, I guess you could say, are in our ultimate form. We see Susana. We're going to try to rotate onto him. He's very weak. He is able to get box four. We miss our three. We're going to use our two. Get a basic attack and we're able to clean up the Susano. We see two people chasing us, so we're gonna kinda of fall back, route a safe way, and avoid them as much as possible. We're gonna use our three for increased movement speed. We get stunned, we're gonna throw off our one. We have two symbols on our passive. They're rotating towards the Sylvanas. We're gonna try to rotate in, help them out. We cast our three, get it onto Morgan the Fay, clean her up. We're going to use our ultimate, get the pick onto the Fafnir, that's a double kill, kind of a soft triple kill. We throw off our one, we were a little too early there, a little too excited. We take a lot of damage, we don't have any health or any mana, we're going to have to back it up right here. We are able to escape. 
It would have been nice if we could clean up that soul. However, it was a little risky. We didn't have the health or the mana for it. This artifact has taken much life. Let's hope it takes some more. We're going to go ahead and start working towards Rod of Tahuti. Often referred to as Rod of the Booty. And we're going to pick up beads for a second relic. I'm building stuff. Enemy ultimate down. Enemy ultimate down. Trying to let Odin know, like, hey, we're here. We'd like that XP. Please don't clear the minion wave. We're not really building stacks. We see Susano and Fafnir over here. We miss our purple one. Fafnir uses his ultimate. We get our purple one off. Our passive is fully activated. We're gonna land our three. We're gonna use our ultimate. Clean up the Susano. We're gonna go ahead and set up our wards. Rod of Tahuti is going to give us a very large power spike. So we ideally want to back for it as soon as we have 1600 gold. We are tied for the highest level in the lobby, so I feel like we're doing a good job farming up this game. Oh, why didn't we back? We had enough money. Why are we dancing with Fafnir when we could be getting Rod of Tahuti online? No, <laughs> back. That's such a large power spike that we're missing out on. Okay, rotating thread, that makes sense. We wanna get this XP in gold. Also pick up red to increase our damage. We saw that people were rotating towards left, so we're gonna rotate over ourselves. I feel like it's a relatively even game. We're up 2k gold. Up 4 kills, but it's still pretty close. We're waiting for a good angle to go in here. We get our 2 off. Fire off our 1. We're going to use our ultimate. We're able to clean up these Susano. We have nobody else to attack, so it's going to go ahead and fire our attacks. And the enemy team surrenders. Unfortunate, but if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. It really helps these videos out. If you feel like you learned anything at all, I'll check out the channel and subscribe for more content. These stats for this game will be posted in just a moment. Thank you for stopping by. I hope you have a great day. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.